everybody, welcome to another video. And this time I wanted to talk a little bit about something that I get a lot of questions about. On my channel, I do a lot of music composition. I have uh, seven albums out um, from spanning back to 2005. So it's been quite a while since I've been composing music. Um, but I also do a lot of demos where I compose short snippets of music for folks to hear what certain guitar sounds uh, will sound like in a mix. Um, so a lot of folks ask me like, maybe you could do a video on creating your backing tracks. And I've done something like this in the past, but since then I've kind of changed my method of doing things as I've gotten new tools. And one of the companies I am absolutely in love with, I have absolutely no affiliation with them whatsoever. I've purchased everything that I use here, um, because they're just such amazing tools. And they recently, I did a video on tune tracks, easy bass. And TuneTrack is just that company. I really love what these guys are doing. So I wanted to take you guys through it's kind of a sample project or sample composing project, let's say, where I'm coming up with an idea and how I approach using the TuneTrack tools. Uh, in this video, we're gonna talk about Superior Drummer 3 with some add-ons that I have with it, and also the new Easy Bass. We'll take that a step further. I, I did a, an overview of Easy Bass that I got a lot of good response from. But now that I've had some time with it and worked out my workflow on it, uh, I want to just kind of show you how I use these in combination with one another. So let's do this. Let's go over to Cubase and we'll take a look and see what I have. Now, what's really interesting? Well, Cubase, first of all, <clears throat> I always set up templates, okay? So this is my sort of composing template where I have a whole bunch of, and let me just actually shrink the mixer back down here, a whole bunch of guitar tracks uh, already sort of preloaded with uh, guitar and the DI, so I can just record the uh, DI guitar track through the Line 6 Helix. So if I ever want to go reamp it using Native or Helix or Podgo or anything, I always have that flexibility to go back and reamp the tracks. So I add those in and I always have an instance of Superior Drummer 3. I always have an instance of Easy Bass, Easy Keys, which is another piece of software by the fine folks at TuneTrack for adding piano parts, and various other types of keyboard parts to your sound. We're not gonna be diving into that one today, but a lot of the same things we're gonna talk about are going to apply to it. And I also really like this, if I ever want organ, uh, IK Multimedia has a really cool uh, organ VST, which is the Hammond uh, B-3X, which is very cool sound if you want it. I don't necessarily use that on all productions, but it's there if I need it and want it. <clears throat> so I wanna take us through how to quickly and efficiently create a backing track, a rhythm section backing track with drums and bass to maybe an existing idea we have on guitar. So what I've done is I've composed basically just a, a, a fun little guitar riff that it took me no time to come up with that I thought was kind of fun and interesting. Uh, it was kind of inspired by using my uh, Line 6 Marketplace Ultimate Placator preset, which I really, really love, and I use that in a lot of my productions. <clears throat> it just fits so well in the mix and, and works out so nicely. So I'm using, I believe, uh, the Overdrive 1 snapshot for it. So I came up with this riff here. And let me just play it. This is just uh, double tracked, panned out hard left and right. And it goes like this. Okay, so there's a simple little riff, some cool chord changes. Now, one thing that I really do when I'm composing is I get my head mentally in the game to the grid that I'm using. So to illustrate that, what I did is I took the time to transcribe the guitar tab for this part that I composed, and here it is. Sometimes I'll do this as I'm composing. I'll just tab it out, and this has saved me a lot of times um, where I wanna go back and redo some guitar parts and I don't have to sit there and relearn them. I've become pretty proficient at just sight reading tabs. That's how I would do a lot of my performance videos in the past, and it's just, it's a simple way to do it. So sometimes I find that the little bit of extra time it takes me to actually transcribe what I'm doing, which really doesn't take that much time at all, I save that with the uh, project file and it's something I can come back to later if I ever need to remember what I was doing or what I did. 
easily redo stuff, change things around. So it's, it's kind of a nice thing to have. But the other thing I do sometimes is I'll just put in kind of the bass notes that I think will work with it. Not so much the chord, full chord names, but just like kind of the bass notes that I'm sort of mentally thinking about as composing. <clears throat> now, the reason is, if you notice, in this piece of music, there's no 16th notes. So the resolution of the rhythmic grid we're looking at would be eighth notes. And what I can do is I can look up here and go, okay, my first note here comes on on the and of beat four, right? We have one and two and for rest, three and four is still rest, coming in and. There's no note on the one. We're gonna have a little hammer onto the F sharp on the and of beat one, two and three, right, rest, four, we're gonna have kind of a muted note, and then on the and of beat four, we're gonna to go to C sharp. So very syncopated feel to this. Now, there's a good reason why I did this. A lot of times I can just, I'll just do this mentally and, and see that grid visually in my head. This is going to help me in a couple minutes when I start creating my rhythm section for this. So we'll come back to this and you'll see kind of why I put that there. So what I really love about Tune Track and Superior Drummer 3 and now Easy Bass is it gives you a very simple way and actually, I shouldn't say a simple way, many simple ways of coming up with parts that aren't just generic, but rather can be tailored to suit whatever riff you're playing. As I said, I kind of purposely wrote this riff to have a very syncopated feel, lots of accents on the upbeats. Now, some folks might say, well, that's gonna be really hard to find a drum groove that's going to nail kind of these syncopated shots. And there is some truth to that. So let's take a look first at Superior Drummer. I'll pull this up. And first things first, in my template, what I do <clears throat> is I, I have a drum kit sort of as the standard one. It's the Rock Foundry. Now, there, these are add-on drum kits and you have to pay extra for these. Once you get Superior Drummer 3, it comes with the drum library and we add on to it. And I have purchased quite a few of these. I have the Decades Library, the Rooms of Hansa, uh, New York Studio Volume 3 and Avatar. Uh, one of these may, I uh, can't remember if one of those came with Spirit Drummer 2, but I have Orchestral Production, uh, Percussion, sorry, 1 and 2, Progressive Foundry, The Rock Foundry, Latin Percussion Easy Axe. So I, I've got a lot that I, I, I have. I really like The Rock Foundry, and this was uh, done with Toontrack in, in uh, participation with Bob Rock. So he's made these drums sound absolutely killer. They're amazing, okay? So um, that's what I have come up as my default setting. That doesn't mean I can't change this. I could come up here and check, uh, change this to whatever I want. If I wanted the decades pack, I say, okay, fine. Totally different sounding drum kit, but I'm gonna come back to the Rock Foundry default kit. You'll see when you're loading these up up here, it shows when they're finally loaded up completely so you'll get all your sounds. You'll see as I hit some of the drums, the sound doesn't come out simply because it's not loaded up. So we always wanna wait until that's loaded up. Now, um, down here we have our, our, our song uh, timeline essentially. So we'll, we'll click this off. <clears throat> now, that's gonna coincide with the Cubase song timeline up here and we have bar one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, and so on and so forth. I always start my songs on beat two, just so that nothing inadvertently gets cut off on, on uh, measure, you know, one. You can also reassign uh, the numbers here so that this is kind of, you know, a zero bar and this is bar one. That, that's fine, you can do it. It doesn't matter for this case. All I know is that I'm starting on beat or measure number two. So I would also subsequently want to drag things down to measure number two in my superior drummer uh, timeline as well. <clears throat> as well as, if I pull up easy bass, same sort of thing. We're gonna have the same bars down here in our song. We'll come back to that in a minute. So what's a quick, easy way we could start working with superior drummer three? Well, we can go to the grooves tab, very simply. And I've got a whole bunch of groove libraries here. Some of them came with um, superior libraries, as you can see, superior libraries, decades, New York Avatar, volume three, you know, these are all uh, ones that were included with the drum packs I got. And these are all add on packs alt rock grooves, AR, ballad grooves. So I could pick like classic rock grooves, halftime verse, and take a listen to this. And then there's variations of those chorus. 
So I could quickly say, I want an intro. I drag it down in my timeline. I'm gonna drag it over here though, so it doesn't get in the way of what I've already recorded. Uh, I want a verse one. I need a chorus one. Uh, after that, I'm gonna go to verse two, you know, chorus two, uh, you know, bridge one. I have no idea what this is gonna sound like, but once we come over here, And as you can see, it just goes through the various sections with all sorts of variations. Now, the chances of that just working with my song are gonna be slim to none because I have these syncopated shots and whatnot. But it gives us a great starting point. Okay, and the other thing I can do is, let's say I wanted a different fill going between, you know, our verse and our chorus. I can go down to the fills category. And just drag that down to the timeline so we get something like this now. I could do the same thing, pick a different fill. And drag whatever we want. Now this is obviously just showing you essentially how the timelines work. I don't want any of that on there. I wanna go back to the beginning and work with the riff that I have, but I need something that works with it. <clears throat> so. I could do something like this where I say, well, let's just search around and I'll say, okay, I want just like a classic rock groove, um, say mid-tempo. Um, and I could, you know, pull that down onto my timeline at bar two and see how that locks in with, with my guitar riff. Now keep in mind, I recorded my guitar riff to a click track at 150 beats per minute, okay? So if I solo this guitar out with a click track on, you notice it locks in with the click track. That's very important, because otherwise, if you don't have that click track on and you're just playing free time, there's no way that your superior drummer or easy bass tracks are going to lock in with it. There's just no way, okay? So you gotta record that to a click track, very important point. So coming back to superior drummer, let's see now what happens with this random drum part that I picked for it. I don't expect it to be great. Yeah, you know, there's parts of that that worked, parts that didn't. I could simply come in, double click that, <clears throat> go to my grid editor and edit any notes out that didn't work. But that would probably be a lot of work. See, these grooves are all played by real drummers. So there's a certain feel to them. Where if we can keep the general feel of the hats and most of the snare hits and you know some of the kick hits and just move things around to match with whatever riff we're playing, it's a great way to kind of do a hybrid system of programming drums yet using the human feel of the original player. So that's kind of what I'm aiming for. But that one didn't work out so well. So there's a really, so I could search around all my groove packs until I find something that works, but you know, that's gonna be a lot of work, right? So there's a couple of really interesting, cool <clears throat> little ideas here that Superior Drummer uses. They have a feature called MIDI Drop Zone and they have a feature called Tap to Find. Now, what's interesting about this is if I, I have an Akai MPD-218 uh, MIDI controller, which is just a drum pad here. Right? So watch what happens. If I listen to my riff, I'll put a click on with it. I could practice kind of a rhythm that I might think would work. So let, let's do this. like that might work, but how could I possibly find that in the library? Well, there's a couple ways I could do this. I could actually come in here, arm the track for recording, and record what I just played to MIDI. 
Now down here, if you notice in my panel, I have, it's a setup MIDI record modes. I go here and I wanna make sure that merge recorded data into existing parts is selected. And watch what I'm gonna do here. Right. Now, I may, I'm may i not a drummer, so <laughs> I may have not played that in time. I can double click on this. All those notes will show up down here on my timeline. I can select them all and I can simply come up and hit Q, uh, which is set, the quantize set to eighth notes. And if you watch when I hit Q, all those notes move to their place on the timeline perfectly in time. Now that's gonna suck the life out of it, but I don't care because I'm not gonna use this track. So now what does this sound like? Okay, so now what if I wanted to just, this is why I set the MIDI uh, record to merge because now I can just go overdub over that and put like some crash and some hi-hat on that too. So let's put our click back on and let's try this again. I hit record. Now, if we kind of blow this up, and let me just get this onto the screen so you can see it, I could come in and select all of the notes that I just did, quantize those as well. Now I have a workable little part here. Now, I guess if I was happy with that, you know, I could just keep it like that, but there isn't a lot of human feel to that. So what I could do is I could just take this, I'm gonna shorten it up to the start of a bar. I can go and take this to my MIDI drop zone right here. I can drag it down to it and it's now going to try and find a match for the first couple bars of that, okay? So what happens here at the beginning right away is it goes, Now you gotta keep in mind, that's a rhythm from my groove library that I have. So it's not perfect, but I'm interested about this. And I can right click on this and I can say, select containing folder. And it'll take me to the whole folder. That's from the NERS New York volume one um, MIDI pack or drum groove pack that I have, straight four four. So now I have all these variations of it. So if I kind of play through these, that's, that's variation 12. Let's listen to. Now, I'm not looking for the perfect take because I'm going to go work this into and edit it to work with my drum track, sort of, sort of uh, just customize it to work with what I need. So let's remember that. I'm just gonna drag that down to bar two on our timeline. We'll come back to that because we could always double click this and go back to that uh, containing folder. Another way we can do this is we can use something called tap to find. So without having to go up to my MIDI up here, which I, I can just delete that. I'm not gonna use that again. I could use my drum pad still uh, and go. So when I hit tap to find, what happens? Superior drummer starts a click track. I have my quantization to eighth notes. It's automatically gonna quantize to eighth notes. And I can do this as soon as I start playing.
Now I can hit show results. It doesn't really matter that, uh, and I'm going to get rid of browse folder. It doesn't really matter that I didn't play something perfect or that it wasn't right on the money. It's going to give me suggestions out of the whole library of things that are in that ballpark. Let's listen to what it gave. That actually comes pretty darn close to what I want. So I'm actually gonna come down here and remove this one. I'll just delete it. And I'm gonna drag this down, but I'm also going to hit find in uh, containing folder and groups. So this is part of the Superior Drummer 3 library, up tempo, straight 4-4 four, four of this particular drummer, Norman Garschke, I guess is his name. And here is a couple. couple variations on it too. But I'm actually really liking this verse one. It's eight bars long. I've already put it down here. I'm going to kind of come through here, double click this. I'm gonna watch along. I'm gonna listen to how this fits with my guitar riff. Now that fit a lot better than what I had before that, but watch how simply now I can make it work perfectly. I'm just gonna delete that note. First thing you notice is when, I'm, when I hit my first guitar note, it's on the and of beat four, right? So if we zoom in a bit here, there's beat number four. Well, there's and. I don't really want the accent hit right here. I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna slide this back, the crash cymbal, and the kick drum back. Now you're gonna see how that's gonna start at the same time. And in fact, let's do this. Let's put our hi-hat hit back in and we'll just move those back. Let's listen to that again. Actually, I like it without that hi-hat hit. So let's listen to that again. Okay, so that's working. Now, there's a couple things I like and a couple things I don't like. I'm gonna go through here and show you what I like and what I don't like. This is going to be the creative part. Totally up to you as an individual to decide where you want drum hits, how you want it to work, and that's going to be the composer's uh, you know, own personal tastes and preferences. So let, I'll go through and make some changes to this. I don't really like that hit, so let's listen to that. That's okay. Now, again, I'm going to move this back to here. I'm gonna get rid of that kick. I don't want that kick there. I wanna accent this, I'm gonna pull my uh, crash cymbal back. Again, I'm not crazy about that note that they keep putting in, but they did this for a different purpose, right? That works for me. Now, I could take that and simply copy and paste all of that in. And now I have a perfect copy of the two. Now, the only problem is that uh, that is starting a, a measure early. So I'm just gonna come over here. Now, I wanna see how that works. So what I'm gonna wanna do here is because this, we need something right here, a kick, and a cymbal hit. Now, again, at the end, I probably would want something a little different for the fill wise. So I'm gonna come back to my song library that I was using, I'm gonna go down to the fills and take a listen to see what we could put possibly in. There's a one bar fill. Kind of busy. Ah. 
as you can see, some of these are extremely busy, but what I can do is simply drag that down, zoom into it, and maybe just grab like the last two beats of it. Possibly move that over the last bit there, extend it out and add a final kick drum and maybe cymbal crash to end it off. We'll hear how that goes in. That's all right, I guess. What I don't like is there's a cymbal crash here with no kick, so I can just add a kick in there. Let's hear what that sounds like. Yeah, or I could come in here and add a bunch of snare hits without any cymbals. I kind of prefer that. So see, just because we drag one of theirs down doesn't mean we can't fix it up ourselves. So let's listen to that entire piece now um, and see what it sounds like. Right, uh, very simple, very, very simple. I could also have taken this, noticing that there's kind of like that palm mute on the B, Let, let's remove this. I could also right click this and just say add empty MIDI block. And right there, double click that and just paint in my own notes. Maybe I want something that just builds and we could use a couple cool tools here. Uh, maybe I wanna just come kick drum, kick drum, kick drum, kick drum, kick drum. We could grab all of these notes we can grab our velocity tool right here and watch what we can do. We can have them build. Okay, so watch it. But then let's say I also want to maybe have a rack tom doing the same thing. Again, we can select those notes and have it kind of fade up. And then let's also do the snare drum doing a similar thing before ending on this crash and a build on all of them. So this little tool is invaluable for creating these kind of builds. I kind of like that. Let's just back up a little bit more. So even though I painted that in, it didn't take me long to customize things the way I wanted. I think I can come in and get rid of this fill and create my own little fill that I thought worked real well. Okay, so that's my drum part, fine. I, at any point I can go back and mess with that. Now let's go to the bass guitar and we'll turn this off and here's our bass guitar. Now, uh, here's our timeline. We know we have to start at B2. Now the thing about it is if we come back to our uh, Guitar Pro 7 here, where I have this written out, we have our notes and our timeline structure where the notes have to change. Here's why I like to have that mapped out. Here's what it's gonna allow me to do. I'm just, you're not gonna be able to see this, but this is what I'm gonna be looking at here so that I could work very quickly over on Easy Bass. I can simply come over here, uh, hit Add Groove, and what it does is gives me an eight bar alternating eighth note pattern Okay, and I'm gonna just solo the bass so that you can hear uh, only it without any of the other stuff going on. And this is what you'll hear. Sorry, let me get that back. Okay, it's not designed to be anything special, but it sounds like an authentic bass player kind of pumping away eighth notes on a C, but that's not gonna help me here. What I first need to know though is that I am going to need to extend this back. I'm gonna go back a full beat. Oops. Let's do the whole section. Uh, oh, I thought that would go. Okay, there we go. All right, there we are. I thought that would have done it all together, but maybe there's a way to do that. Anyways, um, so I know I'm going to need a note here, which is then gonna promptly on this and right here be a different note. So I'm gonna stick with 
my eighth notes here, but I'm going to chop my bars up. So I can hit Control and Alt, and if you notice what that does, is this is on Windows anyways, um, it give, brings up my scissor tool. So I know that this is fine as a starting point. It's not C, we're going to worry about that in a second. But on AND of beat, or measure two, okay, of beat number one, right here, I need to slice my chord part, okay? Because it's going to be a different note. Two eighth notes there, I'm going to slice it again right here. Then over at AND. Okay, so now that I've got that all chopped up, what I can simply do is come in and start assigning my notes. Now I know from this that I need this to be an E, this to be an F sharp, in this case they're calling it G flat, right? <clears throat> this one here, and I think I missed a cut here because I just need a single eighth note back on E, so I'll do a cut there, back to G flat, all right, and then at this point, we're going to go up to a D flat, C sharp or a D flat. This one's going to be down to an A. Uh, this part here is going to go to a B, uh, back to an A, back to our B. <coughs> back to A and back to B, at which point we're kind of starting the, you know, the, the point where we start this riff over again. So we're going to have an E, G flat, quick E, G flat, whoop, E, back to G flat, or the F sharp as I was saying, right? Uh, this is going to go to D flat, this to an A, and then finally this here is going to go to a G sharp, but in this case we're going to call it A flat, and then finally up to a B. Now these notes should sort of work with what we have going, but if you notice here, I just want to double click on this and I want to stretch this note back. Whoop, I don't want to get rid of that. Sorry, let me just grab my arrow tool and I want to stretch that back so it hits that first note. Now let's just listen to this. This shouldn't work perfectly, but let's see how quickly we can kind of take that and edit into what we need. I'm sorry, I should have stretched that back only to the and. I should have been zoomed in more. Right there, that should work better now. Now, I could simply say, okay, I want to copy that, but I'm not going to copy it yet because I want to refine that to a point that it's going to work a little better with the riff we have. Now, if we come back over here and maybe just solo this, we can hear what the bass is actually doing. Uh, let's, let's take it with the drums, just so we have some sort of context with it. First of all, I want to grab those notes. I want those to be lower E's. So I'm going to go con shift control and an arrow button down. It's going to drop it by an octave. And now we have this. Now, I don't know. That's kind of busy. I'm going to get rid of this note. That's not bad. I could now say I want this to be a hammer on. Grab those two notes, hammer on those hammer on those, just to give it a little bit of something else. I'm going to get rid of that note. I'm going to take those two and have it do a little, uh, let's see, slide, uh, slide between the two, maybe a legato slide. Let me extend that note. I'm going to get rid of this, extend that note, and maybe make those a hammer on as such. Get rid of that note. Hammer on.
Okay, I'm gonna take all these, I'm gonna drop those an octave again, and maybe do my hammer on thing, just to add a little kind of interesting little inflections to these. Again, let's get rid of that note. Get rid of that, add some rhythmic variety. Nah, yeah, maybe not that one. Let's, let's try that one. Try that one. Okay, let's do that. We'll copy this. Uh, I'll paste it right here. And then we just have to bring this in by a half a beat, slide that whole thing back. Uh, because we had the pickup note at the beginning. I'll extend this out, double click that. So it's already showing up there. And I want to add one more B note at the end, but nothing too long. Uh, just, yeah, probably an eighth note is good. And let's hear what that whole bass line sounds like with just the drums now. Okay, there we have it. So now let's unsolo everything and let's take a listen to that with the guitars and see how it all works. I heard those slides in there. I wasn't really too crazy about. I would probably just take those out. Uh, and that's the thing, once you listen in the mix, you'll have a better idea for uh, what those things will sound like. Let's listen to that. So you see how we have these tools. Now, the one thing I could have also done in Easy Bass is just gone to their Grooves tab as well. And they've got a pile of grooves here and they have the tap to find as well. They've got the MIDI drop zone as well for bass parts. They have drums and keys and audio tracker where we can kind of have it mimic the drum part and whatnot. Um, that could possibly work too. Uh, where I could go to the drums and keys and I could then grab my drum part and put it up here and then ask it for a new one uh, where I grab like my drum part and I drag it down here, okay? And now what Easy Bass does is it locks into like just the kick part. kick and snare, kick and snare with mute. So I could come to this part. And just tell it, put that down on the MIDI time and replace MIDI in song selection. You'll see that all the MIDI will change here now. The problem is, is sometimes it doesn't really work the way you would hope it would. See, it's kind of taken out some of the notes because of the nature of the part I have. So I could maybe go to this one and say the, tell it to do the same thing, or this one, but we're still missing out on some notes. I could go with the power hand, which in this case would be the hi-hat. Um, but for some reason, I'm just gonna cancel that and go back to what I had. I think because of the syncopation and whatnot, some of those drum hits aren't on the upbeats, so it's missing out on those. So the nice thing though is they give you so many ways to choose what you want to do. And like I was saying too, I could have just come over to the groove library and said, you know, I want a rock uh, feel, uh, standard rock feel, straight, 4-4, four, four, and it'll give me a whole bunch of grooves to choose from here.
as crazy as it is, I could take that and I could say, uh, replace MIDI with that part, and then we could hear our part with the chords I already put in. Obviously, it's totally, totally incorrect part, but I could, if I wanted to, come through these. That could be my part. Let's listen to that. It sort of works better. The only other thing too is here, for some reason this got moved again. I think I moved it before. Okay. Um, we could also then just keep trying, uh, you know, different parts. That could work. Let's hear what that sounds like. You know, so there are options if we want, if we aren't feeling creative and we want to try different ideas. And sometimes it just gives us a starting point. But the neat thing is, is what it does is it always takes on your chord progression. So you might have to go through a lot here that don't work, but what an interesting creative way to kind of keep messing with things and come up with new ideas. You know, a lot of people will say, well, why don't you just grab a bass guitar and play it? Well, that's fine. Uh, but then I'm kind of locked into what I did. I'd have to set the bass guitar up. I'd have to, I actually like this for composing because it can spark new ideas, maybe give you a feel that you never thought of that then you can add variety to and variations to. And with all these grooves and different libraries and different ways of editing them, uh, it's really quite interesting. You know, here's a very busy pattern here. I wonder what that would sound like. Obviously terrible, but you can maybe go in and get the feel of what he was playing and change the notes around so you get a different feel in there as well. So lots of possibilities, but ultimately I would just cancel that and, and leave what I had, which was ultimately this. So you see how with a little bit of practice and a couple creative ideas, you can actually use the tools that TuneTrack have here to really put together a quick backing track. You know, when I use this for composing for my al albums and whatnot, <clears throat> I actually never worry too, too much about it. I get a good working uh, idea going and then I send it off to real musicians. You know, my last album, I work with Marco Miniman on, on a number of albums I have. Uh, and Tony Levin did a track, my friend Jason Henry did some bass tracks. So I send these ideas off to them and then they take their brilliance and creativity and, and, and elevate it to an even higher level, which is what I really, really want. But these are great composing tools and I like them too, especially, I mean, you could do a full production with these with a little bit of tweaking and a little bit of moving things around and, and probably fool most people into thinking you worked with real musicians because ultimately a lot of these parts are played by real musicians, those drum parts and everything. And us moving you know, a kick drum by half a beat or, or adding a little fill is not gonna really throw the whole feel off. You're still gonna have the dynamics that the drummer put in there and that the bass player put in there. So some really interesting tools that we can 
can use to have some great outcomes. A very good time to be a musician with all these tools to help us create, compose, and, uh, and be creative and uh, really get some enjoyment out of our instruments. And so I hope you guys enjoyed that look at kind of my approach to using these tools to kind of get to a point where you can create something fairly quickly that is going to be of decent quality. And obviously there's gonna be so many other possibilities with this, depending on the style of music you're doing and and, uh, and, and also your know-how. You know, it takes practice to get good with, with working with these to the point where you can uh, do things quickly and get a workflow going that's not gonna slow you down and slow the creativity down. I find once you get that going, the sky's the limit and you come up with some really interesting ideas, so. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Check out TuneTrack's website. They have uh, all these products available, all quite reasonably priced, I think, uh, with, uh, with add-on packs and whatnot to just suit whatever your ideals and needs would be so you don't have to buy a huge package if you don't, aren't going to use parts of it. So hopefully that helped you and uh, hopefully that sparked some ideas for you to get a better workflow or a, a workflow going for your composing and uh, making of backing tracks and whatnot. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, please like the video, share it if you don't mind. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I will be back soon with some more content. Ciao for now.